Good evening, and welcome to Lawful Stupid RPG and Heroes of Theros uh, for our very first Maiden Voyage into Theros. So, it's the land of Neolantan, a small coastal city. In the morning, the 21st of Polydresian. It is the summer solstice, and the day starts as soon as the sun rises with singing at the edge of the bay as people dressed in festive white garments face into the sunrise and sing their praise into the morning sun. A curious figure steps away from a ship having recently landed. Blue skinned, in blue garment that that flows like water. Vara makes her way into the city, looking interested at the strange customs that uh, seems to follow along in this land. Vara, you have singers on the shoreline. You have various festivities and things starting up in the city. What are you up to? Um, I think I very much look like a fish out of water, <laughs> quite literally. Um, it's been a long time since I've been on land. Uh, I've been off on a very long voyage um, with my current crew. And um, I think I'm really just hoping to get a pulse on what's been going on on land I, I assume i've come from relatively far away um so i know there are festivities about so i think i am i'm not familiar with what the festivities are so i'd like to head to probably the most populated area where there are people either dancing or eating or talking and uh just try to listen just kind of eavesdrop and see maybe where to go next okay up the road a ways, you can see that people are beginning to gather in the main court of the town. The bazaar is beginning to open, stores are beginning to open on the sides. Uh, apparently, no matter what the holiday, the stores will be open as, you know, market, market rules all, even, even with the blessing of the sun god. But the praise for Heliod sings out as people begin to walk their way up the city street singing morning sun morning sun come my way come my way and they continue to walk and more people begin to join in as the crowd makes its way up the street Ptolemaeus, you're in the mid midst of a discussion as you usually are with a couple of individuals and you've been talking about the purpose of these activities and and what does it matter why would it be such a big deal for heliod i mean after all didn't he destroy a lantern to begin with so why is everyone doing praise for him and it's annoying to you that the singing begins to drone and drown out your voice as you're trying to have this conversation <sighs> Ptolemyus kind of like flips his hair a little bit and just turns over and just it's, this is exactly what I mean you see everybody's just it's all monotonous everybody just wants to celebrate for the sake of celebrating it's but, but it's it's the sun god look at look at the joyous things we've got we have the largest temple to Heliod anywhere we do That's this true. to keep in his good graces. Good graces so that we need another a neo neo lantern. This is neo lantern. What happened to what happened to the first one? Mistakes were made and, and grievances were handled, but but it's so all love and joy now. Sorry, this is what you're talking about. We're we're saying sorry, apologize. Would you every would you time we do this? I, I really wish you would keep your voice down a little bit. We we really don't need to anger the gods. You know, we don't need to, but 
sometimes it doesn't make sense. I'm just saying it doesn't, it's not all sense. What, what would you have us do? D destroy the temple? No, you could keep it there. We just don't have to have all the... I get it. I get it. The morning's out. Yes, the sun's out. I get it. You, you see that? That's, that's, that's a little bit too much, don't you think? No, I, the people are happy. They're going to the feast. I mean, they're, they're bringing in women and children from, from the wars and, and, and setting them up in the temple and providing food and shelter. And Tell me how, Tali. How is that a bad thing? It's not necessarily a bad thing. All of those things are good things. It's the reason why you are doing it that's less than ideal. So you're saying that it, it doesn't matter the outcome, it's what you put into it and the reason that... Doesn't the ends justify the means? Weren't you no. saying that at one point yourself just two weeks ago? Okay, so that is something completely different. I think you have to realize that logic has little intricacies every single explanation every single time there's some situation that comes up things change that wasn't about gods well you know that what definitely has changed wasn't about gods me? that destroyed the first lantern you know you, you know what has changed for me i need a drink me too right. <laughs> he grabs your arm and walks you over to one of the stalls and as they you make your way past the centaur who is standing off to the side had been observing this conversation and is just shaking his head trying to understand the logic that any of you are putting together. I mean, this is this is Heliod, the sun god. Yay. Agrios, as you are contemplating these thoughts and uh, only getting a little bit irritated as there's nothing to smash. You feel something brush past the inside of your leg, your rear leg. And as you look down, you see a small, smallish satyr making her way through. And you notice as she picks up a vial off of the shelf at one of the stalls, quickly secretes it into a bag, and then continues on the way. Hmm. Hello there. Who, me? <laughs> yes, you. Hello. Uh, and what was that you just picked up? You have amazing eyes. It's, I don't know what it is. Do you want to come and look at it with me? We gotta move away. We gotta move away. Your stealth game is not good, but your eyes are good. Yes, uh, I'm not the quietest, but sure, I'll look and see what it is. I'm Tikaros. They call me Agrios. Agrios? This is gonna. Yes. This is gonna sound weird, Agrios. But how do you feel? If I were to ask you if I could ride on your back. No. That's okay. Mm. Maybe one day, if we become friends. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? I think so. I haven't had a friend in a while. Well, let's go somewhere quieter and look at this file. Sure. I look around for somewhere that we could potentially get off the beaten track a little and just take a look at this thing. All right. As you look around, there, there are several stalls, and the crowd is now making their way in front of where you're at. So there's definitely not going to be any crossing to the other side of the street. So probably the best you could do is back up behind the shopping stalls on the right-hand side of the road where you're currently at. Sounds good to me. Let's go. 
This, of course, means passing back by the shop from which you just recently took something off the shelf. Would I, would I realize that? I'm kind of like really starstruck by this incredible creature I've just met and not that intelligent. So I don't know if I'd notice. I, I'd say probably not then. And you make your <laughs> way back. And as you walk by, a hand reaches out and touches you on the shoulder. I know you. I know you're not supposed to be within 30 feet of this stall. Police! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. I'm really forgetful. Please, please, just give me a chance today. This one day. It's such a beautiful, festive day. Warmth to the sun. Warmth to the sun. Oh. You know her. Yes, yeah, she's a little thief. Oh. What are you going to do? I'm going to have her arrested. <sighs> oh, but we were just talking about being friends. Is there anything that I could do? Oh. Yes, get her away from my stall, and anyone who is a friend of hers is not welcome here either. Stay away. And you smell. Take a bath. <clears throat> now, now, that's very rude of you. Are you sure you really want to talk that way to someone who's so much larger than you are? Yes, actually, I do. Agrius will turn around to leave. Well, let's be going then. And before he leaves, he's going to kick out with his back legs. <laughs> excellent, excellent. You hear a crashing noise as hundreds of vials of very rare ink are launched into the air. And then you hear a thud as the shelf catches the merchant under the chin. And then you don't hear any more complaining. <laughs> he runs off and you know what? He's going to grab uh, Tychoros and say, congratulations, we're friends, as he swings her onto his back and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Having turned and, and done this kick and run, you find yourself now mixing into this large crowd that has been making its way up, singing their songs, and you are, find yourself surrounded by people in white garments carrying various flowers and lanterns on posts, and you are kind of drug along with them as they make their way towards the Temple of Heliod. Adrastos and Ariana. An <laughs> Adrastos and Ariana, you happen to be making your way out of the Colosseum where you have been doing your morning workout routine because you're preparing for the games. And one of the main spots for starting games is Neolanton on the summer solstice. So you've been uh, working along with a couple of centaurs and a couple of other specialists doing feats of strength and, and doing some basic wrestling and getting started from this. So you're making your way out into the main court, courtyard because, hey, you've been working up a big hunger. It's time to find some food and things. And you come out just in time to see a centaur uh, it had to be a mistake. It must have just been overjoyed and partying with the thrill and kicked up his legs and inadvertently overturned uh, as an entire stall, but then had a satyr and ran into the, the midst of the group of the partying people from the city. And you see as they begin to make their way and you have just a few moments before that crowd is going to hit where you are on the street and you're going to be completely separated from any possibility of getting breakfast this morning. 
you see Adrastos, that's the kind of thing you're going to be up against. That was clearly an accident, and he took out that entire stall. There are at least three centaurs in this competition, and you have to be on your top game. Ariana, please, don't insult my intelligence. I know what I'm up against. Yes, you keep saying that, and yet you can't keep up with me and track it. Uh, Yes, well, listen, you're more of a distance runner, I'm more of a sprinter, you know how this is for me. Well, you have to be fully, okay, food, food time, I'm starving. Yes, food, please, I'm very hungry. Dodge through the crowd. (laughs) What kind of Um, stuff is there? As as the crowd uh, close up, I'm like, hold on, Ariana, I think I've got this, just kind of flexes. Clear the way for the champions of the Sun Claw! And there's a moment, there's a brief moment where you think that people hear you and and they, they hold up because the crowd stops for a moment and everybody turns, but then you realize they are continuing to turn and nobody is looking or paying attention to a word you've said as the sound of very large wings beating against the air catches your ear. And you see as a sphinx begins to descend from the skies onto the front steps of the Temple of Heliod. Now that's not something you see every day. Oh, I didn't know there was a riddle competition in this. I don't think I can participate. This is going to be all all, all you, Adrastos. (laughs) Well, we'll see about that. But I'm... uh... The Sphinx has not changed my hunger. Let's find some breakfast and then find out what's going on with that. Absolutely. I this, always think on uh, the stomach. This delay helps you in a moment because everyone is distracted. You can quickly make your way across to the area of the bazaar where several food tents have been set up and various meals are being prepared. So you can have your pick of pretty much anything you're looking for. Great. Tons of meat and carbs, yeah, and we're just carbo loading, just lots <laughs> yes. of protein. The yes. <laughs> probably probably a few ales as well, because why not? Oh, absolutely. Being the loudest and most obnoxious people in this entire festival, somehow you didn't think it was possible, but they're more annoying than anyone else. Uh-huh. So you're you were issued many good mornings. Uh, you end up in a stall next to uh, Ptolemaeus, which you have seen around town before, definitely known for uh, having a bit of a mouth and taking up any cause that needs someone to speak for that cause. He's more than willing to speak up for and take any side of an argument that's necessary and, and try to find the logic in it. Would we know him by name? Uh, you've probably heard his name, absolutely. As to whether you've actually spoken to him or not, uh, maybe in passing. Okay. You, you're, um, what's his name address us? Ptolemaeus was his That's name, the I one. believe. Oh, have I met you guys before? Uh, probably not. Um, I'm Ariana, and this is Adrastos of the Sunclaw. It's very, very lovely to meet. Um. Is there a reason why you uh, approached me? How are you at riddles? Terrible at them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it really depends on the riddle. Mm. If it makes sense, then you know I'm 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 there. But if if it doesn't make sense, if there's just some obnoxious answer, well, you must have noticed the large creature that landed on the stairs out there. No, I've been in here drinking. <clears throat> and so I just kind of clear the. One of the things to the tent and just point. Yes, that's you, a sphinx, I think. And you hear the you yes. hear from the person who has who was sitting with Ptolemaeus, Ptolemaeus and drinking. You hear as he goes, "Oh crap!" Friend of yours. What? What is it now? You're going to find a reason to go debate the sphinx, aren't you? I... Maybe. Um, it's not necessarily going to be the case. Uh, if it Sphinx see reason well, most of the time, so I don't think there's actually anything to debate. Uh, to to clarify to clarify for you, my friends, uh, uh, 
M Master Leonin and, and, and ma'am. Um, his last discussion with the Sphinx and discussion of how reasonable they are was explaining to the Sphinx why their answer to their riddle was the incorrect answer. So, because uh, it was the incorrect answer. Adrastus just gets a massive smile and goes, ha ha, now this I must see. Claps a big paw on Ptolemy's <laughs> shoulder. Come, friend! Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, this isn't... Mm. How about oh. first a drink? There's some food or anything. And we'll, we'll see what happens afterwards. Uh, I think Ariana's gonna join and, like, put an arm under his so they've just lifted him up off the ground and are gonna start walking towards the Sphinx. Oh yeah, no, we have taken Ptolemaeus. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um. Uh. I will see you later. I. I. I remember that. I'll remember. It this. was. It was your turn to pay. He does this every time. <laughs> get dragged off. <laughs> you get kidnapped a lot. <laughs> Am I being kidnapped? No. 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 Can I leave? No. No. <laughs> Savara. So your grouping now, uh, as you have walked along with this crowd, uh, you have come upon uh, this satyr and centaur who are just seem to be hanging out together, kind of odd. They're they seem to be having a side conversation, looking at something, uh, but they definitely don't seem to be atten paying attention to the large creature that has appeared on the, the steps of the temple, which seems a little unusual to you. So you really have a little curiosity about what are they on about? Perfect. Yes, I, I will quietly kind of <laughs> creep up uh, next to uh, Agrius and kind of just lean by him and um, uh, pardon, pardon me. Um, uh, there, there's a creature with wings uh, and it seems very important and I was just curious uh, if you all know what it is. Oh. Do I know what this is? I would say you've, you're probably familiar with the mythos sufficiently, you would know. Uh, that is a sphinx, I believe. Is, is, is it part of the festivities? I have no idea. Well, what, what, what do you have in your hands um, that's more important than the large flying creature? Oh, it's a vial that she acquired. Oh. Forget the vial. What about you? And Tikaros is just looking at you with like wide little little wide eyes going, she's never seen anything like you and is just looking at you with absolute admiration. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I have um I haven't been able to change. I, I walked through this this weird ink puddle earlier and it's ruined the hem of my gown. Um I, I don't mean to be unsightly at the festival. <laughs> No, you look beautiful to me. Oh, where are you from? Who are you? Forget the Sphinx. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, I, well, I'm from the sea. My name is Vara. Um, I'm just here for the festival. I'm actually, well, I, I, I've been on ships for a long time, and I, I think it's about time for um, me to discover uh, new land, land. Um, that's, that's about it. Not much has happened to me. Um, what about yourself? You have horns. I, it's quite lovely. Thank you. Agrios, I think we just found a new friend. This is the best day I've had all week. Uh, yes. Um, I'm very interested to see where this goes. Yes, my name is Agrios, by the way. Also, people call me. Oh, lovely. I'm Tikaros. Tikaros and Agrios. Oh, lovely. That's so fun. What a good, and, and your friends that I can yes, join. Yes, we just met today. Oh, two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that typical that you become friends with someone you just met? I, on the crew, you're kind of forced to do that. I didn't know if that was... Uh... Oh, not for me, but... Uh... I appreciate certain things about Tikaros. Oh, uh, well, hopefully I can uh, yeah. prove to have some quality that you appreciate as well. Um, I well, did over here. 
That yes. attempts do you often make people angry and cause chaos? Kind of, in a way. Well then, let's be friends too. I like that. Um, as new friends, um, I do have uh, a couple important notes. Um, I did overhear that there was a feast, which interests me. But what interests me more is the person I overheard it from um, has this 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 hair that uh, looks like the stars, and that's kind of my my whole thing. Um, so I kind of need to meet him very 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 dearly, importantly. Um, so feast, star hair person. Um, and I don't know, I mean, the star hair is kind of interesting. Maybe that's a, that's a quality that causes chaos in, in someone. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps he can join our, our lovely, our friends of the festival today. Um, and, and I do like the sound of meeting the Sphinx. Oh, yeah, the Sphinx. Sound like a proper voyage, the, these points of interest. I All of these things. All of these things we must do right now. Perfect. <laughs> I think um, I think we'll get to them if we just follow the crowd. Uh, it, do we need to hide this fire? Did you steal this? Is that, is that what you? What? Huh? Is, is oh. that what you're being secretive about it? Did, did you Did you take that? Oh. oh. Ownership is such a fuzzy concept, isn't it? <gasps> oh, I quite agree, actually. Mm. That's why I like um, maritime kind of law. It's a lot more interesting. No one owns the sea. Well, uh, I guess you could say some gods. Uh, anyways, well, the thought is there. So Sphinx first and see if we can see a star-haired person on the way. Yes, and food. And food. Let's do it. Perfect. So you work to extricate yourself from the crowd of dancers and everyone else who have working themselves into a tizzy over the fact that this sphinx has landed at the temple grounds and you've heard a people of a couple of people say is is that the oracle is that the oracle of Miletus? could it could it be why would they be here don't they always isn't it always a foreboding of bad things when they arrive so all of these rumors are beginning to swirl around as you make your way out and you just happen to come out near the food area because that's close to the temple, of course. Where else would your feasting food stuff be? And uh, you happen to see ahead of you um, a Leonin and a very large Amazon of a woman carrying a star-haired man off the ground <laughs> under his arms. His legs are moving along as he goes, but he obviously doesn't realize he's not the one moving himself forward as his mouth is running quite continually as he is... What, what exactly is it you're, uh, you're explaining to everyone as you go, Ptolemaeus? I'm like kind of like tiptoeing right now. I'm just like, you see, no, the last time they said something about wanting no nothing and, one, and, and what was it? What was it again? Uh, if you have it, you, you don't want it and, and stuff like that. And, and, and it's like... The answer was 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 nothing, and and it felt, if if you have nothing, then you don't want. It was it just didn't make sense at the time. I, I was oh, just that's no. Just what you're what saying makes perfect sense to me. No, yes, but also, but also the way the Sphinx, kind of spun it. The answer should be nothing. Well, it sounds like the fair victory should have been yours. Yeah, it should it should have been, but. I don't know. They, they was just, you're just immortal. I was, ha, blah, 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 blah. And I, I don't know. It was, it was just a weird, are we, are we stopping anytime soon, by the way? Are, Not until we get to the Sphinx, no. Okay. All right. I haven't eaten yet. I'm just saying. You haven't oh. eaten? Turn around no. with him still in our arms. Well, let's get you some food, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys eaten? <laughs> just follow him around, I guess. Clearly not enough. I feel like we've we, on the way to like the big festival. We were stopping at like little carts and just like grabbing like kind of mini snacks on the way until we got to the actual food. Fair enough. Exactly. So yes, back to the. <laughs> whenever, whenever, um, a little detail though is whenever um, Ptolemaeus starts talking a little bit more and more, the waves, the stars in his hair starts kind of like moving even 
it's they don't they don't actually stay still it's almost as if like they have like little waves of of them moving around and it it moves faster every single time it's like his emotions are a little bit more uh talkative this uh some kind of uh, enchantment uh no i i had an accident and i woke up and this happened Usually when I have an accident, I end up with a broken leg, not magical hair. Well, well you clearly haven't had the fun ones, Ariana. <laughs> clearly. I wouldn't say it was fun. I almost died. That sounds like fun to me. I, I've definitely had those kind of fun accidents. 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 I'm not so sure I should be around the two of you anymore. Oh, it's it's totally fine. Everyone around us stays safe. We're the ones that get hurt. Oh, okay. Well, think of us like uh, well, and he kind of grabs his uh vestments. Think of us like the suit of armor. The person inside the suit of armor is completely fine. The armor might get a little dinged up, but and he just kind of hits his chest really hard. Totally fine. Ah, well, I I kind of like reveal my armor. I was like, apparently, some people don't like me talking. You see these uh, you see these right here. I get stabbed sometimes just because they don't like listening to what I say. You said your name was Ptolemaeus. Yes. Well, well worry not Ptolemaeus once easier. more, Ptolemaeus. Now that you've made a friend of Adrastus of the Sunclaw, you yourself are an ordinary member of the Sunclaw tribe. Anyone who will trying to stab you will have to go through me first, and they will find that difficult. Oh, well, He's quite good at getting stabbed. I am I mean, good at getting stabbed. Ha <laughs> ha! It would... I'm gonna trust your judgment on this. I'm gonna trust. I'm gonna trust this. And, uh. Yeah. Okay. We, we are very trustworthy. <laughs> Come now, as let's get this, you fed. As all this conversation happens, and the, the, the people that you saw, Vara, that had attracted your attention suddenly stop, turn, and go the other direction. And you begin to notice that the hair on this star-haired person begins to flow, and it's even more inuring to you. It, it, it totally, totally pulls in your attention. And uh, you just suddenly start following. <laughs> this way. <laughs> and Vara. you find your... Sorry. Sorry. Quick one. Vara. Yes. I think... Those people have kidnapped your star man. Do you want us to help you kidnap him back from them? Ooh, shall we kill them? Uh, I I don't think we should kill people at um, mm -hmm. a festival where there are many, right. many people. Um, I don't think that's a good way for me to start my uh, expedition. But um, kidnapping someone who's been kidnapped uh, is quite an interesting proposal. I will, I will go ahead and um, say yes to that. So um, I, I, I believe I can kind of just lead the way and the, the stars are, are calling to me. It's quite, quite beautiful. <laughs> and then Vara almost starts to sprint um, kind of towards them, shoveling her way through the crowd. And this way, um, oh, pardon me, excuse me, this way. <laughs> Is our space it's, it's, good enough that we see them coming? Uh, what's your passive perception? Uh, Twelve. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Not in this crowd. You may understand that there's some shuffling going on and hear various noises, but it would be very hard to pick out anything particularly to do with you. With all of the other rumors, noise, dance, frolicking, and happiness that is ongoing. And us chatting to each other, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. So after a couple of moments, uh, Vara and crew uh, catch up to all of you as you were finding a table, and all of a sudden, you hear a booming voice as Agrios stops cold in his steps, his head bows for a moment, and then he looks up and says, The 31 deaths will not avenge the sins. And then he... Agrios? comes back and looks down and <laughs> what 
did I say? Did I say something? <laughs> uh, are you all right? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, <sighs> did, we, did we get to hear this, by the way? Were we around the Oh, area? it was out loud, absolutely. Yeah. Everyone, all of you uh, heard it. Address is just like claps upon Ariana's shoulder and says, this is the best festival ever. <laughs> the, uh, does Agrios have uh, symbols of his god on him? Uh, the most prominent one that you would see is on his back, well, on his shield, which is currently on his back. Right. Uh, a large painted uh, symbol of a four-horned minotaur. Fabulous. Uh, Ariana's got hers right square in her chest of the helmed uh, Iroas. So, <laughs> so she mm -hmm. won't have seized yours, but we'll look over and I, you are correct, Adrastos. This this is definitely a good place to start a competition. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I gotta say something. Um, did you, you say thirty one? Did you say thirty one deaths? Oh, no, did I? Yeah. That sounds wonderful. I want a word, I would uh, say, but... <laughs> Praise the gods. Praise Mogus. <laughs> oh, all right. That makes a lot more sense. Um... <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry, Adrasos, but I may have found a new sparring partner. Hello! Hello. Oh. What <laughs> you? Ariana, lovely to meet you. Yes, he reaches out to take your hand. Um, shakes very aggressively. Oh, right back, but like in the most joyous way possible. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to duel to the death? Um, not particularly, um, okay. but it could be fun. We'll find a time, don't worry. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, I'll take yeah. you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I like the cut of your jib. You are a magnificent beast. As are you, hand paw out, Adrastos of the Sunclaw. Hmm. Grios is what they call me. I I'm starting to think that I accidentally found myself amidst a group of um, very eccentric people. I is this normal, or, or, or are we just, are we all just a little bit crazy? <laughs> Not normal, but it is a blessed occasion. I have received another vision from above. I'm oh, is that what that was? Yes. I am blessed with the gift of an oracle of Mogus. Okay. Oracle of a death god. Intriguing. God of so much more than death. Bloodlust and war. Of the heat of battle. The loss of control. As much as I don't necessarily agree with the last one, the rest of it, totally on board. Yeah, I'm uh, who, are, who, are your, drink. who are your friends? Hello. Uh, themselves. Uh, yes, um, I'm Vara. Uh, we spotted you. Well, I actually spotted um, this lovely starry-haired individual from, uh, oh, I don't know. It's been a while. I've been following you. Um, what? It's Ptolemaeus. Ptolemaeus. What a beautiful name. Um, your hair is the most divine thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, and I just had to meet you and let you know and um, ask what exactly your connection with the stars are. Um, well, okay, um, I had an accident, almost died, woke up, and this happened. An accident? Uh, yes. A a accident. And you almost died? Almost died. But you didn't. How did you how did you live? Or it was just a close call? I don't I don't quite know actually. I was there and then I was here. Oh, that is quite um well, that's that's so fascinating. Um I uh I'm a uh, divine righted Triton of 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 Athreos. Uh, Tr Triton. Yes. That's that's why I couldn't recognize that you were the skin so and the scales. Yes. Unique. <laughs> yes. Um. Were you from 
old old lantern i mean a, a lantern the, the original one i uh unfortunately though i am triton in nature i was not raised by them or know them uh really have any have, i haven't met really any other triton so i perhaps have some kind of lineage history there huh well i yeah I, I i really wouldn't know what to tell you about my hair besides the fact that they do they do kind of move whenever i get very emotional about uh certain topics i think does, does it seem like it's in line with the star charts at all and i'll start i'll start just touching your hair like not even asking and i'm just kind of observing the constellations and glancing to the sky and <laughs> nope nope go right ahead go yep Yes. All right. I've been dragged across this market already twice. It's fine. It's think, it's okay. I think we have much to learn from each other. I, I believe that you can help me on my divine quest. Sure. Sure. As long as it doesn't involve those 31 deaths over there. Oh, it very well might, well. because that's my friend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you probably won't be one of them, though, because you're important to me now. Oh, Captain. I Don't worry, Ptolemaeus. Do I'll be sure you're not one of them. Yeah. Uh, Ariadna's gonna duck down uh, over to Tichiros and uh, and say, uh, and, and yourself. Well, I'm just loving all of this. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, to be honest. But, hi! And she kind of nuzzles her little head into you because you just look really kind of friendly and lovely to her. Gives <laughs> her instinctive head scratches. Oh, well, you're lovely. You guys are quite the mismatched little group, aren't you? <laughs> Ariana, who's your new friend? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I'm sorry, I'm Tikaros. Tikaros. Uh, I'm Hi. Ariana. This is Andrastos. Hello, Tikaros. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> And, well, um, we were just sitting down to uh, have some food before the competition this afternoon. Actually, before speaking to the Sphinx so that uh, Ptolemaeus can finally get his true victory over a Sphinx in a riddle competition. Oh. That sounds maybe, amazing. Maybe. Yes, I, I did hear there was a feast. Where, where do we go for that? Almost, almost as on cue, a large large bowl of food of various seafoods and, and vegetables and things all roasted and freshly done is set on the table in front of you have a seat friends feast with us you you truly are a, some kind of well no wait agrios is the oracle you're just a divine quest person right i'll i'll get that straight food yes <laughs> and, also... and drink lord knows i need it that's no I needed. And almost as if on cue, we more drinks are offer. brought by and sat around the table as well. And it's festival. <laughs> you know, they're just bringing food and <laughs> setting it. You you picked a table, and therefore you will be fed. <sighs> There's nothing like the smell of food. And the song. Beautiful landscape before you to make you just want to raise the whole city. I I was with you until I was not with you. Huh. When was that? Was it landscape? Probably the raising part. The food. I, I I agree on the food. <laughs> yeah, I would agree on the, on the food as well. But then, um, why would that be anything to do with uh, raising the city? Well. What else are cities for? <laughs> you know, this might be one of your riddles, uh, Ptolemaeus, but it, it, it does sound like if you take raising as raising like a society, but also raising in the tearing down portion, cities are always for raising. <laughs> Except he's probably only speaking of the latter. Oh, I'm quite sure. Yeah. Well... Destruction must come before creation. Rot yes. before growth, as things are. Everyone must true. understand destruction is an important part of the natural order of things. 
Now you're speaking my language. This is true. If there isn't anything about dis destruction, evil, and and you wouldn't know what is good. You wouldn't know what was pure. You wouldn't know what was peace. Yes, but creation, rejuvenation, none of those are my concern. It is my destiny to be an instrument of Mogus. My only purpose is destruction. Um, Adrastos is going to not looking directly at Agrios, but um, he is going to kind of just say, as if he was cheering the food, but he is going to say in Minotaur. Oh. Have you ever made your way to Oreskos, Agrius? Which comes out sounding just like <laughs> for anyone who doesn't speak Minotaur. He will respond in Minotaur. Good. I am from the lands of the fairest. And I learned of my god in Phoboros, or the lands nearby. Why? Idle chatter, friend. Idle chatter. Sudden, suddenly, Adrastos, you feel a very powerful hit in the small of your back. Oh, you're talking in that stupid language again. And a female centaur walks by and grabs the the piece of meat that you had in your hand and takes it out of your hand and eats it. And goes, um, I would like to resist that. <laughs> <laughs> if I can. All right. Uh, let's do a uh, contested strength check here as you both attempt to grapple the meat that you have in your hand. Okay. Is this just strength or is it athletics? Uh, you can do athletics. That's fine. Okay, because I am fighting for this. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Oh, wait, that's cock. There we go. That's uh, eh, still not great. 14. <laughs> 22. <laughs> okay. As she grabs it, and as you hold on and attempt to, to keep this, you're actually lifted out of your chair a little bit and eventually as you you know slip off and let go she puts it in and you recognize this is myra who is one of the uh one of the contestants you had been working out with myra uh, welcome uh, what is this you're eating and she quickly throws it back down onto the plate and uh, uh, have to find some real food Ariana. There's plenty around. Yes, You're you will, and lovely. I'll have to find some real competition. <laughs> you can't even hold on to your own meat. And she just, without even realizing what she just said, she turns and starts to walk away. Uh, she kind does have a point, Adrasta, Adrastos. I'm sorry. Making she sure she flexes that. as she goes, you know. <laughs> All right, well, Adrastus is feeling very slighted and very embarrassed, and he does not care for that. <laughs> so he is going to um, pick up the food. He's going to kind of hold it in his hand. He says, seems fine to me, Mira. <laughs> and he's going to huck it at the back of her head. Oh, yes. Agrios <laughs> is going to rear up and yell, food fight! Adrastus, <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me a... Give me an attack, a ranged attack roll here as you are <laughs> attacking with a hunk of meat. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, so I'm assuming I don't add my proficiency to this because it's improvised. Yeah, I would say it's probably not something unless you're <laughs> used okay. to hurling meat. I. <laughs> it's still a 19. Nice. All right. <laughs> and you, you hear the thud and and splat as you peg her in the back of the shoulder blades and just. And you see, as she just stops, and you see as the fists clench, as she turns around, Drastos, Mira. did you throw that at me? I certainly did. 
What would you care to do about it? She reaches down and just kind of pats around on the table next to her and grabs the only thing she can find, which happens to be a fairly good-sized cake, and takes and just launches it straight at you. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm oh, going boy. to take the... Uh, I'm going to take the dirty 20 as a probable hit. Uh, if I don't have my shield out, yeah. <laughs> okay, and so this is going to come across and just kind of hit right here and splat past you and across the table onto Agrios as well. As there's now cake smeared across the table. I will look to Agrios and just gesture with my hand like, your turn. <laughs> Agrios starts grabbing food and throws it indiscriminately at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly the room just erupts with food and drink being hurled back and forth. And there are no factions. It's pretty much table against table as every table begins to start passing the food back and forth. And I mean, there, there, there are like half cows in places being thrown around <laughs> and launched across the room as this battle. Decoros uh, is going to jump through the battle that you've just beautifully described. And she's going to be using prestidigitation, like little gusts to like, just give extra bits of food, like that extra splash factor around the whole, the whole area. Little food bombs going off. Okay. Are the rest of you... How are the rest of you handling this uh, combat that has ensued? I think uh, I think Vara will will be just kind of sitting and, and almost cowering in fear for a moment, and then someone will throw a plate of uh, what looks like lovely seafood, and she'll try to catch it and take it under the table with her and just <laughs> like munch on some scallops. And um, anyone who's uh, uh, being a pacifist may join me under the table. <laughs> No, I'd be, I'll, I'll dive under the table as soon as someone like smacks me in the back of the face or like yeah. back of the head with, with a clam or something. I'm just like, the sea, why the seafood? It, it's, <laughs> it, it has shells. And I'll just kind of like. Uh, upon hearing Vara, Agrios is going to grab as much food as he can and start specifically targeting the groups together pacifists. <laughs> no peace. <laughs> no peace. <laughs> Join the battle or be slain. <laughs> oh, I do not want to be slain. And, and I'll just kind of peek out from under the table with like a little scallop and just... <laughs> um, Adrastos, being who he is, is like, come on, friend Vara, use your shoulder! He's going to pick up the scallop she threw and throw it at who she had named it at. <laughs> <laughs> And this continues oh. on as, as, and several people, mostly merchants who are preparing food and cooks, come out and plead with people to stop throwing the food. Please don't waste the things. And you hear a couple of calls for sentries. And uh, very shortly, a couple of uh, Miletian hoplites come in through the gate and they're, they're carrying their spears and they've got blades drawn and they walk in and they see just this menagerie of food being tossed everywhere and they look at each other for a moment immediately drop their swords and begin to pick up food and join <laughs> into the fray <laughs> Yay! <laughs> as the battle continues on and, and this this fight go this fight goes on for a good hour as food you know the food on the plates begins to diminish and then eventually they realize well Either it's being eaten or thrown, and they can they start to re replenish the food supply <laughs> onto the tables. Because, you know, they're cooking it for some reason, so they might as well continue. So this goes on for a bit, and eventually some people, you know, tire of it, and they'll, they'll break out and everything. I assume Agrios, however, continues to just continually ramp. And <laughs> for as long as he is able. Uh, Ariana's <laughs> doing the same. <laughs> Just like and it, counting points of like how many people Agrios has hit, and she's like keeping a mental tally of like who each person has taken out with the most food. As the battle continues on and people begin to tire out, uh, you realize eventually that one table seems to be the main fight, 
and it's Myra beyond that table with a couple of people who are fighting back and forth between with you guys and you're continually throwing this stuff back and forth and eventually eventually Myra got puts up puts up a hand and goes, Wait, wait. We're I'm out of pie. Don't worry, I've got one for you. <laughs> no mercy. I assume a pie comes flying over. It it does. <laughs> All right. Good, good. I think it's time that we call truce. It's it's they're about to begin the ceremonies of of pledges and and swearing of oaths and I believe that we should be respectful of this Adrastos. I will walk over and extend my hand to her. Then right. we will continue this in the arena. There, there is and no truce. Will... There's only surrender. Um, exactly. You lost. I believe <laughs> in no truce. You must have been defeat. <laughs> Myra puts her hand forward and clasps with yours. And I mean, cake and pie goes everywhere as the two of your arms <laughs> yes. get the together. The nastiest handshake. <laughs> Very well. Very well. Let's hope you can put that much into our next battle in the arena. Ah, uh, let's hope you can. Kind of slap her on the haunch and walk back to my table. <laughs> <laughs> and she she looks at you oddly, you know, kind of with this look for a moment and then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Tolly Tolly's going to start prestoing everything. At least trying to clean clean stuff off. Just be like, yep. All right. Well, that was that was something something else, I guess. Grand victory, friends. Yes, I'd say so. I mean, better than cannons. <laughs> so, uh, a victory without much loss. So one of yeah. one of the uh, the caretakers of the of the food area comes up and don't don't bother. We'll we'll get all of this. Please go. Just go and enjoy the festivities. Uh, please, just just go. I hope you spill blood as well as you do wine, Adrastos. I promise you, friend Agrios, I do. <laughs> so as you make your way outside of the tent, you, you see that they have set up uh, an area and laid out flowers in a ring around the Sphinx. Who has just been standing there, you know, talking and, and communicating back with others. And then suddenly wings spread wide, hands in the air. And you see as the Sphinx's eyes gloss over. I come with the bidding of the great Heliod for this day. I have come to share. And then you hear an audible gasp around you, and you see in the temple behind five lights that appear almost as though a hand had reached down from the heavens onto the top of the temple. And you swear for a moment you see lights around those five points that line out almost as though you could see the fingerprints of the god, its very hand as it lies on the temple. And the oracle stops for a moment and turns. And in the next moment, your ears are filled with a ringing noise following the percussion of the explosion as the entire three-story temple is compressed instantly down into the ground, shattering and exploding forth. You hear screams as the marble from the stones that explode outward cut through people, shredding them. There is a shock wave that emanates outward from the temple, and I see a hand up. Yes, Adrastos. I just, 
Um, does Adrastos have long enough to make some kind of reaction? Uh, you will wouldn't. and just... Yeah. Okay, he would in this moment, yeah. Okay. That comes down, and the blast wave comes forth, and I will need everyone to make a dexterity save. And Adrastos, this will be your opportunity as well. Okay. Uh, what he's trying to do is get himself between the shockwave and Tolly, Tikaris, and Vara. Okay. In that case, if you are willing to do that, I will give them advantages on their saves and disadvantage on yours. I am willing to do that. Oh, right. amazing. Mm, this is going to sting. <laughs> Uh, everyone, your save is 16. So you need 16 or better. Uh, you and me both addressed us. Real dice are cool, right? Yeah, real, real dice, dice are, cool. are awesome. I rolled an at 20. Oh, Excellent. Nice. Let's go. How's the rest I of rolled, you doing? I rolled an 18, and then I rolled an 18, so I got an 18. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I got a dirty okay. 20. All right. Oh, it does. You got us? I got a 14. Oh, sorry, good. 14. Uh, even with advantage from Adrastos, I got a 9. Oh, so we had three three fails and uh, three successes, it looks like. So those of you with successes are able to, to dodge for the most part, and you, you get hit with things, but nothing that does any serious major damage to you. Uh, the rest of you, you are going to take six bludgeoning damage as these specs of well it's a mix it's a mix of marble stone flesh bone and everything else that is shot out from this explosion in your direction <coughs> oh god what was that oh see i told i told him i told him I think it is the gods which you invoke in that sentence that was that. It would be All right, friends. Um, is everybody okay? This festival is so much better than I thought it would be. Uh, Agrios, would you care to help count the dead with me? Which is her way of kind of tricking him into helping pull things off of the ground to find if there's anyone alive. Oh, so, yes, uh, I, need to, I need to give them all coins. And Vara quickly yes, takes out this little coin bag that she has and starts walking around and, and if she, along with side them, if she finds anyone who's dead, she'll, she'll give them a coin for their passage. Okay. There are, body, there are bodies and pieces of bodies everywhere. It is a bit difficult to determine Ooh. where one stops and another ends if you are within a hundred feet of where the temple once stood. Is, is it possible at this time for, for Tolly to just kind of look at, um, uh, both Adrastos and Tikros look like they, they got hit with stuff, right? Very mm -hmm. injured yes. while, like, they're still here. I think Ari and Iguos already went. Um, if that's the case, I'll see to Adrastos and Tikros, and I'll give them a cure wounds each. If I can. Very good. Uh, let's see, we'll do, that will be, the... that's 11 on one of them, and 9 on the other. Oh, great. As you do that for Tikaros, you see, like, as you, I don't know if you'd use your hands, or, like, how you would do that to her? I would just kind of hold my hands out. Like very, very close, not not like within touch distance, but I, I don't actually have to touch. I'll just be like, there's, it's okay. There's a little bit of damage, but we can we can fix this. We can all fix this. And as you do that, um, you can see like a couple of like little kind of starry sparks and stars kind of emanate from her torso and kind of just flow out towards your hair as you do it. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tolias. But honestly, I've had worse. Well, you might still have worse. Just something to pad yourself for later. And I appreciate it. As you survey the area around you, as mentioned, close into the temple, it is just 
desolation and, and, and body parts. And then you see movement in the area in front of where the stone stairs used to be as this large winged figure slowly hobbles to stand and you see that one wing falls off onto the ground and they turn and you see half of their face is gone as the sphinx mouth agape reaches out towards you and collapses to the ground. Can I run over and try to just give them one point with lay on hands? Absolutely. Adrasus is going to say under his breath, such is the fate of trusting the gods. Ariana's out of earshot. Oh, yeah, he didn't say it to anyone but himself. <laughs> that was for the audience. Oh, <laughs> I can zoom an extreme close up in the camera. Well, similarly, for the audience, I'll just be like, that's, uh, I guess I won. <laughs> and just walk over. <laughs> I'll just. <sighs> <clears throat> Slowly, the ringing in your ears subsides and is replaced with the moaning, the crying, the anguish of the survivors and the creaking and crumbling as you hear the buildings on either side of the, the breezeway as they begin to fall from the damage they took from the shockwave of the explosion. And more like people, people in there. Oh. More people being crushed as the stones begin to fall. Drastos is going to, if he can, try to help as much as he can to stop that from happening. Like get people out. Okay. So Drastos at is the risk of his to... safety. So if you want me to take damage or anything <laughs> to keep people safe, like okay, very good. How about the rest of you? What are you going to do? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tend, I'll try to make sure to kind of see the people that are either dying or injured or something like that and try to, to see if, if there are people that I still can help. The ones that have from the initial shockwave and, okay. um, try to get them to a safe place. Okay. Actually, can I amend what I was going to do? Of course. It's the same thing, but it also comes with words. Um, so he's going to, seeing Agrios kind of doing things, he's going to yell out, Agrios, help me! Even Mogus wouldn't find honor in this! Mogus, <laughs> honor. You have much to learn, but in the interests of our new relationship, I suppose I can help you. Uh, I'm going to, hmm, you know, I'm going to cast Guidance on Adrastos. Okay. okay. And Ariana, Tikaros, Vara, what are you going to do during all of this? Uh, Tikaros will get herself out of harm's way as much as possible. Uh, just, she doesn't want to be a liability in the moment, but she's going to keep a look at each of these new interesting people that she's come across but also just kind of look around and see is there anyone else weird moving through the crowd that was obviously a scary act of gods but she's like i wonder if anyone else is doing stuff around here so she's gonna have a bit of a look-see around at the same time give me a perception check please Ooh. And I'm going to guide myself as I look around with intent. Oh, yeah, natural 19. I will take that plus nothing. 19! <laughs> <laughs> as you stop to take stock of what's going around on, 
does that now the scale of this disaster is more than you're probably used to but you are used to things like this happening and you're used to trying to take advantage of things that happen during shocking moments so you are well aware of all movement that's going on in in the area maybe not specifically a single individual but you just have a sense of where everything is and you you pick up a lot of people going to aid people moving inward but one thing seems odd to you and that is the person who went into the temple and apparently has found some way down the ground. Whoa. That's enticing to me. All right. I'll look around at the helping people and to each of these oddball, lovely people I'm already attracted to. I'm going to go up to each one and tap and look up at them and go, in the temple, there's something underneath. And just like go from one to one and say that and then dart off again and head towards the temple. Adrasto's probably holding up a building as someone walks up. Good, yep. good find. <laughs> go get it. <laughs> um, and, and, and safe passage for you and safe passage for you and hold, hold on, uh, safe passage for you. And she'll kind of start running. And... <laughs> I'll just be like cleaning wounds on a person with like Presto or something. I was just like, well, are you? Don't, wait, 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 no, 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 don't go there, don't go yourself, and I'll follow her. Okay. Um, did the lay on hands do anything to the Sphinx, or were they gone, gone? Uh, no, you were able to stabilize them. So okay. they are, they are there, but they're almost in that, that half phase of being in communing with the gods and being present. Interesting. And if they had if they had their full face they might be saying something but it's impossible for you to tell as they they mouth things but no words come out right uh okay um in that case uh ari will say just stay rest uh help will be along shortly and go make sure that um agrios and adrastos aren't being crushed um <laughs> uh and uh come in under addresses but um are we supposed to follow tigaros is that what we're doing i've got this ariana she needs protection go with her i don't want you crushed by a building i'll I be want fine money tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> um she'll duh fine <laughs> <laughs> and follow off down under the temple right you make your way up to the temple and it's 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 just devastation the pillars are gone the i mean it was a three to story tall temple and now it is one story deep into the ground it's like mm -hmm. it has just been shoved straight down into the ground but you can see a couple of areas where openings have formed natural pockets as things collapsed and moved. It is very unstable as you move. Every step you take, something falls somewhere else and begins to crumble even lower. And you're not sure of that anything have survived. I mean, there's there's blood, body parts everywhere. But in a moment, Tikaros, you hear, you know you've heard, you swear you heard a voice say, Help me. Coming from a hole in the ground ahead of you. Ooh. Well, I like to help weak people. Did it sound weak? Absolutely. Sound Very sounded weak. weak. I looked to see if any of my companions has followed me. I followed it's you. caught up. Yeah. I'm, I'm behind What's you as well. I would, well, I would actually look at Tolly and, and it's a bit like the uh, Atlantis that we spoke about. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't think Did you hear that? Um uh beyond us talking to ourselves. No, I don't I don't I Somebody don't said that. somebody said help me. And she'll oh. just inch forward carefully and quietly. 
Were we able to hear it at all? I will say no, that you did not hear it. Only Tika Rose heard it. Okay. And she what moves what towards she this... She moves towards this hole in the ground. And she gets closer to it and begins to move into it. Not realizing for herself. But all of you are too big to fit. Uh, Tikaros, um, you're going to be going on your own if you go down there. Uh, do you want to hold up? Well, maybe we'll find another way down. Huh? Oh, okay. Um, uh, she Tikaros. backs up. Yeah. Help? Uh, I, I can and then you hear another... You. I'm sorry? Oh, I was saying to Tikaros that I could go down with her. May I cast Divine Sense? Of course. Okay. Um, it'll tell me if uh, anything has been affected by the Hallow spell or if there are any Celestial Fiends undead within 60 feet. That's not behind total cover, so the ground might count as total cover. Mm-hmm. She'll kind of look in the hole. <laughs> you catch the energy of the Sphinx outside, but you do not sense anything else in this area that that would fall under any of those. Um, I can't sense it being something horribly bad. Doesn't mean it won't be dangerous. Um, if you can, perhaps Vara, if you can go down with Tigaros, then at least there's the two of you. Um, yes, maybe Ptolemais and I can look for another way down. Um, and also, just be careful. I trust that you've heard something, but just be careful down there. Remember, if, if there's anything else, call to us, and the strength is within you. Strength is within yourself. I'll give her a bardic inspiration, because she's the one that heard the voice. Uh, to Tikros. Again, the little air. spas kind of little sparkles come out as you do that. It's crazy. I'm just scared. <laughs> <laughs> as you make your way to that that crevice and, and make your way down under, suddenly the there's a new sound that fills the air. It's the sound of hundreds of screaming birds. It's the closest you could get. And off to the east, you see a large cloud. It's like a cloud, but it's moving quickly. And then you hear the flapping of wings. And then as it gets closer, you make out the distinct call of hundreds of harpies who begin to descend upon the bazaar to feed and to collect anything that moves to take home as its own food. And with that, we're going to take a short break. (laughs) When we took our break, Tikaros had heard a noise coming from uh, a hole in the collapsed temple area that led underground. (laughs) And she and Vara were going to make their way down there. But just as they had started on that journey, they heard the noise of harpies, large flock of harpies, making their way in to the temple. And apparently they are intending to hunt. And uh, while the carnage is good food, I mean, there's meat everywhere, they prefer their meat to be on the hoof, as it were. So they begin to chase people around. And the biggest place for them to lead people into that is an open space is the temple. So they begin to fly around and herd the survivors into the collapsed temple ground around where our heroes are at. So with that, uh, Adrastos and Agrios, you were attempting to assist people and who were around the collapsing buildings. 
but with this bigger threat and people now moving a little more quickly to get away from the buildings because of the harpies that are backing around them, uh, would you like to head to the temple area along with your companions? We should go, Adrastos. Yes. And um, as he drops the building, um, are the harpies like nearby? Or are they like all in that direction? They're the swooping in and from all directions. Okay. So um, as he's um, running, he is going to roar out. So you might want to lower your game. <laughs> uh, he's going to roar out, you'll not have them! And he's going to use his daunting roar <laughs> ability. All right. So every harpy that can hear me within 10 feet needs to roll a yep. wisdom saving throw. Not a problem. So you can just, I guess, roll for a group. of Yeah, people. I'm going to roll for, for a, a group, yeah. them in group. <laughs> otherwise, we'll be here a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's my uh, DC? 12. It's not super high, but... <laughs> uh, well, a couple wisdom. of them. A few made it, but several did not. Okay, so they're frightened of me. Okay. Absolutely. So and I'm just puffing it, pawing it, whatever it is, I'm making my way for, <laughs> towards the temple. All right. And Very I'll good. As well. Agrio's so it. The, the effectiveness is this is some of them are like, okay, I'm not going to get too close to that. So they're staying on the outskirts and hurting inwards. So it reduces the amount who are actively attacking in the, the central area of the collapsed temple. So you, you've <coughs> You've reduced the threat a little bit by doing this. I'll take it. Excellent. Excuse me while I uh, bring some harpies uh, onto the board here. And they're just kind of falling where they want. So give me a moment as I try and uh, <laughs> drag them around a little bit better place. So I, I mentioned previously that everything here around this temple is unstable. Any rock formations, they're, they're, they're rubble on top of rubble. So it's hard to know where anything is legitimately going to hold weight as you bounce around and fight on this. So we're going to treat it all as difficult terrain as you work very hard to keep your footing and not fall through anything. And with that, let's have our first for this campaign roll initiative. Woo! I know you okay. said hundreds, but there's a lot more harpies on the board than I expected. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reduced it down to make it easy too, so. <laughs> uh, anybody, anybody 12 and higher? 15. Uh, okay. I guess it's 15. Vara, what was yours? 18. And, uh, Adrastos? Natural 20! Which means <laughs> 20. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, uh, Ariana? <clears throat> Five. Five, okay. <laughs> Drop my Holly? Ice sauce more often. Holomaeus. <laughs> Yay. Uh, total of three, but I got a natural one. Oh, no. Yep. Buddy. Boy. Great start. Uh, Antikoros. Eight. All right. Now, I am going to... Little digit club. I'm going to keep in mind that Tikaros and Vara were both heading underground. So you are at the mouth to this cave. It is your choice. Are you going to stay up here and fight, or are you going to try and help whoever it is down below who is apparently in need of assistance? Um, well, I've already used my wild shape to turn into a weasel. Um, and so I think I kind of have a moment where I, I look to Tikaros and kind of squeak and like almost shrug as a weasel. Like I'm not super helpful in this form. This was a form for <laughs> going into a hole and that's about it. So um, Vara will personally just kind of continue forward. I will absolutely follow. All right, great. 
So I will handle your two at a different way in the combat since you're not in the direct combat above ground. But, so we will get back to you in a moment to what you find as you submerge into the ground. Perfect. Adrastos. There are several harpies diving and swooping as there are women, children, men towering around you as they are being pecked at. And one of the harpies swoops in, grabs one of these children, and flies off with them. And you see this just as it happens as more swoop in. What would you like to do? Do I have my equipment with me? Uh, yes, you had everything with you from the fight, so I would say yes. Okay. From your training. Um, yeah. So, oof. So the one that I saw grab the kid and fly away, how high off the mm -hmm. ground is it right now? Uh, about 10 feet. We'll survive. I mean, fast. <laughs> okay. Um, so as soon as I see that, um, I reach back, grab my gigantic gladiator's shield, reach back into my pack, and just huck a javelin at the flying harpy to drop that fucking kid. Excuse my French. That Drop that kid. All right. <laughs> All right, let's have that attack roll and see how you do. All right. Come on, sauce dice. Uh, 20, 30, 20. That is a hit. Sweet. Uh, for eight damage. All right. You hit the creature, and that is sufficient for it to lose its grip on the child who falls the 10 feet to the ground with a, a minor thud as it okay. lands on. And you hear a crack as well because it's uneven rocks, probably broke something in the fall. But it's not but, dead and being devoured. There you go. And I don't know if I'm able to do this, but what I'd like to do because it is on the back of my shield is draw my longsword and just say, come on! Absolutely, you can draw it for the next round. No problem at all. Okay. Cool, and that will be what I did. <laughs> All right, Agrios. Agrios, let's see. Agrios will take a javelin from his back, holding it in one hand. With his other free hand, he reaches down and smears some blood onto the palm. And then when he strokes it along with the javelin, instead of blood, it seems to be this furious burning looking energy, as he says, to rivers of blood and roads of bone. And he casts divine favor, uh, empowering his weapon attacks with divine radiance. Mm -hmm. Then with his free item interaction, he'll take his shield from his back and laugh as he throws the javelin at, uh, let's see. I marked in what red the one that Adrastos attacked a moment ago. So I will I will highlight the others as we go around and you pick your opponent. Yep, he'll strike he'll strike that one. He'll follow up. Okay. Very good. Uh, let me go ahead and hold hit. That is only a twelve to hit. That actually hits. Okay. Um in that case. That is uh, nine piercing death damage. Awesome. All right. Solid. The creature screams out in pain as your weapon goes through its shoulder out the other side and it spirals to the ground. It is now on the ground, but still very much moving around and, and making its way back towards you, claws gnashing. Uh, with his remaining movement, he's going to run toward it. Okay. <laughs> Face me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Which is exactly what it is going to choose to do, as it is going to lash out with its claw. Meow. <laughs> And that That's is going to be what it sounds like. That is going to be a 16 to hit. 
at which point it is going to pick up a large piece of stone that's a club, basically, that it finds lying nearby, and it is going to swing at you with that. However, with its wounded arm, it, it nat one to that one. With its wounded arm, it swings around and swings wide and throws itself off balance as it rolls onto the ground. And the other harpies, sensing that that you know that is a lost battle to them, they they aren't super worried about it. And no one else having attacked them, they ignore you. And they focus on the meat, the easy meat, the meat that doesn't look like it will punch back. And they begin to dive in and claw and rip and tear. So you have this agony and screaming going on around you as they, they dive in near you, but not close enough for you to touch, not close enough to make an attack on you as they, they go for the, the, the low hanging fruit, the, the easy bites. Ariana, you're up. <clears throat> um, I think I'm gonna try and attack. Uh, how h high up are most of these guys? They tend to be between ten feet in the air and lower. Okay. If they grab something and rip off a good enough piece, they may fly a little bit higher to eat on okay. it. Okay. But. They're, they're all trying to get small enough bite chunks so that they can keep coming back around. Perfect. Okay. Um, having seen Agrios in, imbue his weapon, uh, she's going to pull hers out um, and uh, pull out her shield and her short sword um, and uh, very, like, He-Man, like, point up into the sky and have, like, a little bolt of as it lights um and then the just power. exactly <laughs> as by the power of eros and uh <laughs> may we all have victory and she's gonna like just run up a wall and just do like a full like parkour jump between some broken bits and just leap in the air and try to attack one of them uh, okay the one that's uh, you, you have her, several around here which one uh seems uh, the little guy to my right here this guy right here Okay. Um, I will jump at that guy uh, with my short sword and see how we do. <laughs> oh, that's cocked. That again. Uh, ooh, not great. Uh, thirteen. That is a hit. Oh, ho, ho. exciting. Um, so that's D six plus a D four from Divine Favor, and that's going to be. A two and a two plus two is six. Six damage. All right. You do some cursory damage to it. Not anything too major. You put a few slices in it. It screams out in pain, but it definitely, you haven't done any real debilitating damage to it as of yet. Ptolemaeus. Um, so the one that is in front of Agrios is on the floor. Correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, if that is the case, I will uh, reach behind my back and grab the short bow that I had and kind of just slung over myself and aim at the one that uh, Ari just attacked, kind of as a combination move, and I will okay. uh, loose an arrow. All right. And that is a non net, a dirty 20, dirty 20 to hit. Absolute hit. And that is five points of damage. All right. And with as a bonus action, I will uh, shoot, and then immediately turn over, and uh, to da, 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 da. let's just do one of these. I will turn over to Agrios and say, "This church has fallen, but we still hear the bell toll." And it tolls for a victory. Onward, my friend. And give him a bardic inspiration. Excellent. Excellent. And that'll be... Um, I... Oh, oh well, I'll ask next time. Yep, that's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am going to see if I can figure out 
moving this other map I have down here. So give me just a moment while I play map surf. Because that way uh, it'll be easier going back and forth between the two groups. So bear with me. Man, I want to go down that hole instead. I don't want to be up here. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> Curse this hide of mine. We don't know. We don't know what's down this hole yet. Just you become may, a weasel. You may, you know. just, True. just shapeshift like me. <laughs> so Easy enough, see. right? Everybody else could do that. Yeah, I can. I Gabby, you're a cat, right? Body. As long as your head can fit through, the rest of your body can kind of just squeeze. Oh, yeah, exactly. Adrastos is liquid. <laughs> <laughs> I am. All right, so I am going to put. Tikaros, and unfortunately, I do not have a weasel <clears throat> uh, token available at the moment, but we will take care of that right. in the future. Uh, as you two make your way down through this hole, you come into a collapsed pocket underneath the temple. There's lots of rubble, lots of broken pieces lying around. And it is dark. So I have to ask, do you have dark vision? I sure do. I do not. So immediately, as it's dark and scary, I cast mage armor on myself as we're going in here. Okay. And I'm going to be as stealthy as possible. I'm just going to stop on my tracks and remember my stealthy goodness. Stealthy goodness. Mm -hmm. I, will, right. I will give a quiet squeak to kind of like signal where I am and, and to move towards Tikaros and kind of do that cat thing where I kind of do like a figure eight through uh, through your hooves and I will uh, sniff. I will use my keen smell and try to right. smell out who might have been calling to us. Give me a perception check on that. Perfect. I will do perception and I get advantage as weasel. It's a 16, maybe better. Nope, that's a 1. Good thing. 16 plus 3, that would be a 19. You are, at first, overpowered by the smell of death. Death, yeah. Meat, you know, that is everywhere around you. But then you pick up a distinct odor of... of horse? And then you go, wait a minute, that's, that horse smells like cake. I've smelled ah. this person before. And you recognize the smell as Myra. Perfect. Cool. There's, also, kind of... there's also another scent, but it's kind of masked under that musky, musky sweaty smell of Myra covered in cake. So Perfect. Um, yeah, I will kind of flick my, my little weasel tail against uh, Tigros's leg to signal that I'm moving, and I will start skittering towards the scent, going, sneef, 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 as I go. I'll reach mm -hmm. out a little hand so I can just follow, like, your tail with my hand, and, like, as stealthy Perfect. as possible, just, yeah, go forward like that, too, with you. Slink through. It leads you down towards this staircase here that's somewhat collapsed. But you can tell the smells coming from that general area. Right. And Ooh, do I with your, find the source of the smell? With your dark vision, you are able to see a bit into ah. a ways, and you see standing at the bottom of this, underneath this huge marble pillar, is Myra hands and shoulders bracing this this thing as the weight is coming down and you see the veins popping out as she is putting everything she's got into holding this and you realize it's not just that beam she's holding up it's cantilevered she is holding up the entire room behind it that's hot 
<laughs> yeah, <but> wow. <laughs> oh, and mama. Okay. <laughs> cowering, cowering on the floor behind her, bloodied, and obviously nursing a broken leg, is a gray haired satyr. Cool. I will, I will kind of quickly sneak my way over, well, not sneak, but I'll kind of slink my way over quickly and, and um, I think I will go ahead and, let's see, do tritons have dark vision? Do I have dark vision? I, mm, I don't think I do, so I, I will go ahead and leave my form as weasel um and kind of when i do that i'll make sure i'm by uh by myra and i'll go ahead and, and place a hand on her and, and cast guidance very good and with that i'm going to bounce back upstairs and address us you're up Okay. Um, <clears throat> Cowardly creatures, face me! Fight time. I'm going to fight this one. All right. With Mathweird. Sorry, what now? Mathweird. <laughs> Mathweird. <laughs> um, I don't know what's wrong with that, but. 13? <laughs> uh, that's I don't a remember hit. if that hits or not. Okay, that's cool. a hit. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. I'm going to do you a... I'm going to do you the biggest pinch. Uh, 10 damage. Excellent. Okay. All right. Decently big pinch. Oh, that was pretty yeah, good. That's, that's pretty good. You, you, <laughs> slice a, you slice across and you have damaged this creature's wing. It is now unable to fly. Okay. Um... That is it, because that's all I can do right now. <laughs> Fighters don't have fun abilities yet. All right. Agrios. Uh, Agrios is, you know, how, how dead does this person, does this harpy look at my feet? Uh, it, it's pretty badly damaged, but it is not dead. Okay. It, is, it is bloodied. I'll put it that way. Very definitely bloodied. I really want it to die, so you know what? Um, he is going to raise a hoof as if he's going to crush it, but then rather than doing that, he will uh, whisper something uh, and then stomp on the ground. But when the stomp comes out, it makes the sound of this sort of dull boom as he casts Toll the Dead. Uh, okay. Ding dong! So it's a wisdom saving throw, DC 12, or it takes a D12 of damage. Absolute fail. <laughs> All right. Absolute fail. Absolute fail, yeah. There's, there's, there's no coming back from that kind of failure. <laughs> that is a 10 on the D12. All right. And that is sufficient to take this thing out. So congratulations, you have guilt one. There's from the necrotic damage. He then will walk over and pick up wherever his javelin fell. Okay. But I'm going to do one other thing as you stomped your foot on this very unstable ground. Hmm. Down underneath the ground, Tikaros, the area directly above you, a large chunk of rock breaks loose and falls, and I'm going to need a dexterity saving throw from you. Oh, no. No. You still have bardic inspiration, just saying. Oh, I do, and I'm going <laughs> to use it. Ah! Alrighty, so that is a 17. Oh, that's good. You're you are oh, able yes. to step aside as this rock hits the ground. And as it does, it kind of penetrates in. It was 
like a cone shaped piece that fell out. If it had hit you, it would have been very, very serious damage. That's it. You I'm lighting a torch. <laughs> I say out loud, I losing losing all sense of my awareness, and I start pulling a torch out of my bag to light it. Stuff this <laughs> temple. <laughs> All right. Up top. All of the sudden, the harpies, all in unison, say, Stop worrying about the food. Kill these fighters. Yes! And they immediately scream and begin to dive in to attack. Oh, so man. I'm going to uh, kind of go clockwise around this group. And we have three of them around Adrastos here. So Adrastos, you're going to get three attacks into you with their claws. <laughs> and too hard. Uh, <laughs> total miss. Total, total miss. Total miss. Uh, does a dirty 20 hit. Yeah. All right. That is going to be six slashing damage as one of them comes in and finds purchase on you. All righty. Agrios. A couple of these are going to move in. And make attacks. On you. Actually, I'm going to go... I'm going to be fair. All three of them. I mean, you know, they're all right there. They all see you, and none of them like you. You just feel their friends. They should take it to the uh, water. Miss, miss, and Dirty 21. Oh, that'll That's got to be done. <laughs> I'm sorry? I said all that'll hit. So 21. Okay. 21, all just right. barely. <laughs> And that is going to be uh, seven slashing damage as it comes in and carves out at you. They're really mad at you. (laughs) Man. Oh, God. Ptolemaeus. Ptolemaeus, one of these is going to swoop in down at you. I'm not not even a fighter. You got this, Ptolemaeus. (laughs) That's a 15. Yeah, that hits. That hits. All right. Mm Mm-hmm. And that is going to be five flashing damage. Okay. Pain. Pain. <laughs> Got it. And Ariana, you have the one you engaged with and the other one that's right beside you. So for this round, those two are going to attack you. I, I assume a 13 doesn't hit. A 13 is my AC. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I got a plus one zero next, baby. <laughs> the, the one hits, the other one absolutely does not. So, good news on that. And that is going to be, uh, oh my word. That is going to be eight slashing damage. Oh, oh my God. I might be down. I'm rolling D4s here. <laughs> oh, she's barely up. Well, it's been it's been good. It's going to be a short campaign, but it's been great. Absolutely, you guys. thanks for having me, guys. Oh, I really appreciated it. <laughs> With that, Ariana, you're up. A uh, who, Boise? Um, Mighty Vengeance. Yeah. Um, the one that is the one that I already attacked, I think, is gonna. Get an attack. Do I heal myself? I don't know. Maybe it would make more sense to heal myself. Um, nah. Ariana doesn't <laughs> heal herself. Who are we talking? Who, who do we think she is? Um, yeah, she's just going to attack the one that hit her the first time. Okay. Um, uh, ooh, and that's going to be a 21. That is a hit. Fantastic. Still got divine. Oh, I guess I need to um uh constant roll concentration, right? Um, because I took damage and I have divine weapon up. Yeah. Um what do I add? God, I don't think I've ever rolled concentration. 
I hate concentration spells. Uh, what do I have to roll? Give me just a second. Let me first level spell, and it's. I'm double checking the yeah on that, so bear with me. Yeah. Just a second. These are half damage or ten. Yeah, it's ten thought. or half damage, whichever is higher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, I rolled a thirteen. So. I should be good either way. Uh, no okay, cool. Awesome. Ooh, that's a seven plus two is nine damage. Excellent. All right. You've definitely uh, sunk some damage into that guy. Ooh. And if roll 20 would cooperate with me, I would log <laughs> the damage. There we go. All right. Thank you. Roll 20. All right. Very good. Olimaeus. Oh, man. Uh, Got this, bud. All right. So there is there is just the one that is on me at this point. And I'll just kind of... Uh, can I make like a deception check like it didn't hurt at all? I'll just kind of <laughs> kind of shrug that <laughs> off. Merely a uh, flesh wound. Yeah. Um. It, I mean, it goes. It goes along with with uh. Uh. That is a. I mean, if you would 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 allow the, it would be a non or is a da, 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 math math twenty five on deception. Whereas I kind of just stand over there and just like, ah, wow, you gave up on all the little children just to attack. Me, I'm, I should be flattered, but you're so weak about it too. Um, I'll cast vicious mockery on on that. Harpy Excellent. With that, <laughs> heck yeah, man! I was hoping those were going to be the next words. Um, it is a 13, uh, wisdom yeah. save. It failed. <laughs> okay. Perfect. That was a three. Yeah. I was, I was waiting to see if you were back. So sorry about that. I should have said he failed it. Oh, I love it. Um, yeah, that is, that is the four damage and now it will have disadvantage on the next attack roll. Excellent. All right. I'm going to pop back downstairs <laughs> with Vara beep, and beep, beep. Taurus. So you see in the distance, uh, you have Myra, you know, holding up the floor, basically, and this satyr on the ground. What would you like to do? And you've lit, a, I'm going to say you've lit a torch, so you had mentioned you were going to do that, so no problem getting that done. Yeah, halfway through trying to fuss through my very few pockets for flint, I go, ugh, and press the digitation, just light it, and go, <laughs> Like as if it was a memory she just didn't know she had. Excellent. And she goes into the room following the weasel. Oh, cool, yes. Uh, I used guidance on Myra. Um, and I am not the strongest, but I think I would just kind of... Uh, well, I'd, I'd kind of jo I'd join next to her and, and start to hold up the, the room as well and just kind of be braced next to her, probably not helping all that much, but in, in unity, and, I, and I'd ask, um, uh, is, is there someone still inside? Do we, do we need to save someone, or uh, can, can Are you still an animal? Are you still in animal form, or? No, I, uh, okay. I left weasel form in order to cast guidance. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just get, get, get the young one out of here. Oh, um, I can do that. Uh, <laughs> And I'll go ahead and try to move the... I assume she's talking about the satyr. So I will pick them up and carry them away as best as The I only... Can. With the way things are collapsed around, the only route you have is underneath the leg. So Myra kind of makes her stance as wide as she can as she's holding this thing up. And Tikaros, you see as Vara slides under here, grabs this satyr and makes her way out. And just as she is making her way back out, you see what appears to be a thumbprint appear on the stone that Myru is holding up. 
Look out, oh, Myra. It's... Hurry, Varg. Hurry, there's something happening. Uh, I'm trying, trying to be quick. Mind the fins, sorry. Um, and, she, and she'll go as quickly as she can. Give me a dexterity or acrobatics or athletics. We'll do it that way. You can use either one of those. Athletics would be lovely. Is there any way I can help by yelling and helping to <laughs> lean down and pull arms out? I will try in any case. If you want to run, to, if you want, what's your, uh, what's your speed? Uh, 35 for me. Oh, absolutely. You could make it down. You could charge down there, grab and yank. I'll so try. that'll I'll give you, that'll give you advantage on the uh, roll. Yes, great, great, great. I needed it because I didn't roll super well. Ah, yes. Okay, that would be a twenty-one now. Excellent. Than the ten I had rolled earlier. Thank you me. are you are pulled out, and the satire comes rolling out with you, just as you hear this loud cracking noise, and the entire roof comes down as though a large hand had shoved down on it. And there is run. nothing, there is nothing left of Myra as she is oh. crushed and pulverized. Oh, that's traumatic. Can we get out of here? Uh, um, yes, and, and Vara will, will reach and pull the last coin from her coin purse and, and gingerly place it on Myra's uh, hands. Or whatever's the, whatever I whatever can piece make of you her. can find yeah. left, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's <laughs> a small piece of her. Birth. yeah. <laughs> sure. And and I'll kind of say a quick, a quick prayer, and be on our way. Uh, now I'm I'm no longer a weasel, so um, if we can find a different way out, that would be that would be wonderful. So I don't have to. Uh, uh, weasels are stinky. <laughs> I'd rather not eat again. <laughs> So if you want to spend time to see if there is a uh, another route out, uh, you can do an investigation check and see if you can find a way. Sure. Definitely. I will absolutely help. Okay, so do advantage on that roll. Great. I will investigate. Great. Investigate. Cool. Okay, even with advantage, I got an eight. <laughs> As you shop around and look, you, you were hopeful that maybe in the part that collapsed, you would be able to find, you know, a way up. But so much of the building came down with it. Any, any exit that might have been in that area is totally closed off. The only way out that you can find is the way you came in. Damn. Um, what about you, Mr. Seda? Mrs. Seda? They Seda? What how did you get down here? Vader. I, Vader. Wow. I was on the I was on the first floor with with a, a group of children from the school and and then the building just came came down and there was a voice in the park, a, a woman that said, I've got this, and she was able to direct the children out, but I, I couldn't get loose because of my leg. And Why? Why did Heliod do this? Well, I don't pretend to know what the gods have in mind. But, I don't know. We'll try and get all of us out of here somehow. And then we'll think about this very important question. I don't know if we stand a chance to get out if the gods want us dead. You, you saw what it did to, to the centaur. You should, you should, you should go and hurry out. And I'll come along as I can. Don't. Don't risk anything more for me. Okay then. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I do think there's hope in in being able to 
successfully navigate this. Uh, let's uh, let's keep our head up. Um, I'm sure you can fit through that hole, and I will. Uh, well, I, maybe we can uh, break it. We could try breaking a pieces off it. I mean, this whole place is a mess. I could be a badger. That, that, they burrow, right? I've only seen one once. <laughs> Based on previous experience with badgers, I would say yes, they, they can burrow quite well. <laughs> it will be a badger. So you'll kind of see, I'll take a moment. And, okay, well, I, I'm going to try it, and I, I do hope you follow and, and, and don't get a, give up even though the, the circumstances are dire. And um, Well, if anything happens, I, I, uh, I'll find a coin for you, and I will turn into a badger. It's my last wild shape of the day. Right. A love badger, perhaps, you might call it. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> that's taken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we will come back to you as you guys are working your way out of this. And we are back up top in Adrastos. You are up. Sorry about that. Many, now you several, can hear me. several of the harpies have kind of peeled off a little bit, and there was a question: Are any of these the harpies that you feared? No, they are outside of the temple, as mentioned previously. They're not coming into yeah. the area. Cool. Well, I'm gonna keep focusing on the one that I hit. Okay. See if I can put it down. Go, go, gadget! Get there. Oof. Nope, I missed. <laughs> All right. Um, but I am full of righteous fury, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, action surge. All right. Hit it again. Excellent. Or attempt to hit it again. Let me attempt to hit it again, yeah. <laughs> Just to be accurate. It. 23. That's a definite hit. Awesome. For 10 more damage. And yep, that is enough to take this one down. All right. So you have beaten the smotherings out of that one. Agrios. And I will oh. I will turn to the next one and just go next. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Agrios, uh having picked up his javelin, will actually place it on his back and leave his hand free uh, as he is chanting quietly, um, gripping his shield tightly through rivers of blood, of blood on roads of bone. To rage and ruin, he walks alone. Uh, and he keeps chanting through rivers of blood on roads of bone. And then suddenly he shouts and thrusts his shield in the air to rage as uh, the now glowing holy symbol of Mogus on it lights up and he casts shield of faith with his bonus action on himself. Excellent. Um, and then follows up by, by uh, saying, and ruin, and swings it at the harpy who had struck him. Okay. Um, uh, trying to smite her with the holy symbol with inflict wounds. All right, I'll mark with red the one in question here. And that is uh, 21 to hit. That's a hit. And that's 3d10 damage. Oh, wow. Come on, oh. damage. I can't find my d10s whoops i put most of my dice away for various reasons so i'm just gonna roll on all 20. <laughs> okay um i rolled 3d10 on roll 20 and got 20. that's good enough as oh. as you sever this creature in half just split it <laughs> uh, 
Excellent. All right. So I'm going to go back around clockwise. Uh, unless you've got any movement you're going to try and do. Let me make sure that no, he stays right there. He's loving it. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, our two harpies that are still alive and mobile, Adrastos, uh, you look tasty. They're going to come at you with their claws once again. And that is a definite miss and dirty 20. All right. And that is going to be three slashing damage. My dice are not liking me anymore. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, I'm still bloodied now by the definition yeah. of it. All right. Uh, we have two that are still after you, Agrios. So they're going to come in and make their attacks as well. And that one's definitely going to be a miss and a 22. I believe would be a hit. Right, Agrios, 22, hit. Yes, 22 will hit, unfortunately. Wow. <laughs> I raised it to 20 and they still hit. Uh, Bastards. Uh, that is going to... Well, I just got lucky because the other yeah, attack was horrid. Uh, that is going to be uh, 3 slashing damage. My D4s no longer like me. That's okay. <laughs> oh. right. Fine by me, but I still got to roll my con save. That is 12, which I believe will make it. So yep. I still got my shield. Ariana, the two of them who are around you are going to come in and dive in for an attack. And it's, it's, I'm, I think I'm going to replace this when I'm consistently rolling five on it. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. No, I like that not, one. Not, I, I yeah, really yeah, like that not, one. Yeah. I yeah. kind of feel guilty changing it because you go, you, the odds are against you. What here. was your uh, dice roll? Can you tell me your dice roll on that one? Because I might negate it. Oh, without the oh, bonuses. Uh, the other one's a sixteen without bonuses. Can you re-roll that with my lucky feet? Sure. It allows to roll when someone attacks you. Absolutely. Uh, that would be a ten, uh, so thirteen. So. Oh, that still hits. That's still going to hit. Oh, I'm, darn. Not gonna use a, I'm not going to use lucky again if a 10 is still going to do it. So that's fine. Yeah. All right. And uh, well, that's going to be a bit more. That is going to be four slashing damage. Uh, I'm down. All right. Oh, yeah. Lumaeus. Uh, this one's at a disadvantage. Oh, thank you. Because thank you for the, the reminder. Yeah. And that is going to be a 16. Ah, at disadvantage too, I hit. <laughs> yeah, that's what disadvantage. Yeah, I rolled a, a 17 and a 13, so. Yeah, so sad. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, that is going to be five slashing damage. Okay, that is not fine. Um, okay, not looking great. So you see as Ariana falls to the ground and the harpies both of them descend on her and begin to gnash trying to rip at her but are having trouble getting through her armor but they're trying to tear off pieces of food from her are we allowed to react to our friend falling because a uh, definitely would <laughs> you, you will in just a moment because i'm assuming at this point tikaros vara and the young satyr who has remained nameless at this point, uh, Phil, uh, make their way out of the <laughs> make their way out of the hole and emerge uh, right over here, about uh, ten feet away from uh, Ariana's fallen body. So I will just put you guys up here. And you will now be able to enter the initiative order if you would like to. But Adrastos, we are back at the top with you. Okay. Wait, um, I didn't get a turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did I skip? I am so sorry. Ariana fell. It should have been your turn. My apologies. Yeah. Um. Damn, first one of the campaign. <laughs> it won't be the last. <laughs> so, I see... I see this happening... 
and I'll just be like, all right, well, uh, Ariana, get up, get up. It's not time yet. It's not time yet. And uh, I will cast Healing Word uh, and get that done. Let's see. That is a uh, ooh, nice little seven heal right there. Nice. And then uh, I'll turn back and look at the look at the uh, the one harpy in front of me, and I'm just like, "What else you got?" And uh, yeah, that's it. That's my turn. All right. Very good. Now we're up to Adrastus. Okay. Uh, yeah, Adrastos was going to be all like, ah, oh, but then he saw that Ptolemaeus had it, so, uh, he just turns back to these two harpies and says, you will pay double for every drop of her blood you have spilled. And swing his weird. <laughs> uh, miss. But that's okay. All right. Vara, you're up. Right. Um, so we have just to confirm we have successfully burrowed our way out. You are out. You are back on the surface, and you see as the harpies are fighting with your friends, and those that are not fighting with your friends are going after the civilian populace. Lovely. Um, yeah, I think so. Me and my badgery self. Uh, will head over and kind of crawl my way over to this closest RP and just join in on the on the death and murder and blood and chaos, as Agrios put it. <laughs> <laughs> um, except, okay, so I'm Little Badger, I crawl out of the hole, I spy, I go over, and I have a multi-attack, so I will attempt a bite. Um, oh, and it has reach. My bite has reach. That's interesting. Oh, wait, no reach. Red wrong. Um, let's see. It's because you're a buck tooth badger, so you've got, I, you've got that extra teeth. Uh, that's a 10. I assume that doesn't hit. That does not hit. Sorry. Great. And then after I make my bite, I attempt my claws. And that's a five, which hits even less. So I just kind of am getting used to my new badgery body, and I just kind of go ah, and <laughs> realize that I wasn't quite close enough. <laughs> thought I thought I had longer arms than that. <laughs> <laughs> Little T-Rex arms. Turn. All yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Agrios. Okay. Uh, let's see. So Agrios at this point is going to keep killing if he can. Um, this time, out of spell slots, he's going to reach back, take his javelin, and start spearing. Um, okay. He'll ta attack this one up here if he can. Okay. Uh, up sort of northwest of him there. Um, Let's see. That is uh, 14 plus 5. So that's 19 to hit. That's a definite hit. It's going to be 7 piercing damage. And then he's going to follow up with, might as well use it all. I'm going to use my special War Priest feature to attack again as a bonus action. Okay. Um, jabbing at the same one. That is an 18 to hit with to hit? Eight, eight piercing damage this time as he stabs Excellent. again. Right. You've definitely damaged this one quite a bit. It is, it is bloodied. And lashing out but definitely uh appears to be in pain and a little bit more worried about itself at the moment that's my turn excellent you hear 
a noise coming from the front end of the temple. And it takes a moment for it to register what you heard was the approaching marching order steps of Melitus Hoplites as the remaining soldiers who have survived this have now made a shield wall. They have their spears and they are advancing and coming up to render aid to all of you as you continue this fight. So what that is going to do is that is going to distract any additional harpies that would be out in the way and they move in and they are close enough they are going to place an attack on one of them is after Adrastos. And a spear comes sailing through the air and impacts this one just to your left here. I'm trying to get him to ping, but he doesn't want to ping. There he goes. And he's now, this one now has a spear and it's trying with its claw to pull it out as it's fighting with it on the ground and kind of, you know, turning in a circle, trying to get the, the blade out of itself. Meanwhile, the other one to the north is going to go ahead and continue to make an attack, but it's going to be somewhat of a haphazard attack, as in seeing these soldiers coming in has definitely uh, made it realize that the free food portion is, is over. And it attempts to claw at you, but dives in to claw and then immediately pulls back, so it pulls itself up short as it isn't able to make its, its regular attack against you. Uh, Ptolemaeus and Ariana, the ones that are attacking you, do similar things. They're, they're kind of looking over their shoulder, but attempting to claw at you as well and not making any progress on their attacks. And let me do one more set of rolls here. For Agrios. Well, Agrios, they weren't doing so good until the one got a nat 20. Which is my AC. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Can you imagine well, it's also 20 before modifiers, so. 20. Yeah. Good yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to. Uh, yeah. You know, what we, what we had agreed as a group is max damage plus a roll in modifiers. All right. Go for it. So. That is going to be max damage. That's going to be nine slashing to begin with. Plus five slashing. I'm down. <laughs> Oof. And badger, 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 you were fighting one. So that is going to be on the far side away. So mushroom, mushroom. Uh, it attacks at you and mushroom, mushroom, it misses. Nice. We're all going to be a bit of a We're flailing at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, Icaros, you're up. Oh, boy. Uh, I think the first thing I would see is that beautiful athletic woman who said hello to me so nicely on the ground, being pecked by these hideous things. So, what oh, I'm going to do. Oh, she's I'm up. up she, now. Was, she was I healed just, by Ptolemaeus. However, yeah, so. your, your amazing centaur friend is on the ground. That's true. He's on the ground. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step over this log and try and get some cover and just try to shoot some beautiful magic missiles at that awesome. hideous thing attacking my new friend, Agrios. I love it. So uh, what you can only see fire is... magic missiles with bisexual finger guns. Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm not doing it's that. It's the somatic component. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you see instead is beautiful, thin, streamlined spheres of darkness. They're long and pointed, but still they've got a bit of sphericalness about them. They just shoot out of her fingertips. And they've got little, again, like you've seen, Tolly, some little stars just sparking at the end of them. Ooh. And they are going to, that's a good roll. That's how many how many missiles and are they all targeting a single creature? Good question. Hmm. I'm just gonna go. Yep, I'm gonna do it all on one. Okay. The closest one to me. Okay. That'll be this one here that I just hung. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one Perfect. that I put the damage on as well. 
Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Let's take that one out. So it's going to be 10, 11, 12, 13 points of damage. Uh, tell me what happens when these uh, spheres of darkness take out this creature. Yes. They kind of, they just all, they, they twirl through the air before eventually just coalescing into the midsection of the body. And as they do, just like imploding darkness, like a black hole in the center of the chest. And at the same time as that happens, Tikaros's hair rides up in the air behind her and one of her eyes goes white and the other one goes black. Not that anyone would notice, but that's what happens. Excellent. All right. As this happens in that harpy falls, the harpy that is over badger salting with uh, Vara looks at you and says, Love? And Ariana, you're up. What? Um, <laughs> huh? Uh, am I in any kind of distance to um, Agrios? Yeah, I think so. Uh, he you know, is right here. So 5, right there, 10, okay. 15, 15 feet. It is difficult terrain, but your speed should be fine for that distance. Cool. Um, Oh, that's two attacks of opportunity. Yeah, she's probably going to go for it. We'll see if she dies. <laughs> she, she's going to um, uh, try to like duck her way, uh, do some little boxing moves against these harpies to try to distract them a little bit and then bolt uh, to leap over the the fallen temple pieces to get to Agrios to cast, uh, or to um, lay on hands. All right. Well, they are, of course, going to take their attack of opportunity. They sure are. And uh, come on, Might Jonathan. Do that. 11 is going to miss, I'm sure. Yeah. 16. Can I, can I make them re-roll that one with luck? Absolutely. Amazing. Uh, and that's another eight. So <laughs> yes! let's go. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Uh, Better be gonna... rather be lucky than good any day, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, she's gonna kind of duck around with her with her shield and sword, and she definitely is one of like holds her sword like where it's along her arm. That's how she fights. Duck around and then yeah, leap over a couple of things, slide along her shield, and just sort of slide right up, and then uh, hit the. Uh, Agrios for take five. Right. Uh, Agrios coughs back to life. <laughs> Victories this, and secured yet, friend. This is a great festival. <laughs> just, just maniacal laughter from the both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the two of you going back and forth. Ha ha ha! <laughs> oh man Ptolemaeus Amazing. you're up I was just like listen to all this I was just like hey, we're still we're still in a fight oh okay all right okay and then um immediately look up at the harpy and it was just like you're not really doing your job really well I'm still up you're still there so come on let's go one more time. One more time. Uh, I'll cast another Vicious Mockery, though, with this one. Okay. And seeing as how everybody is okay. Ish. Oh, I guess Ish. I ought to roll for that, shouldn't I? Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is a 12. Nice. That's a fail, and that is another... Uh, that is a 7 points of damage. I mean, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, what am I talking about? 4. The 4. Four plus, yeah, four. Okay. Four uh, plus the disadvantage on the next roll. 
Excellent. Okay. Uh, he actually see he seems very hurt by your words. Good. Visibly. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> visib visibly cut, cut to the bone. So. Uh. And Adrastos, we're back to you. All right. Adrastos is seeing all of his friends do really cool things, and he's whiffed so many attacks, he's really getting frustrated. So he's just going to stab. Uh, the, he's, he's feeling honorable still, so there's a harpy on the ground. He's not going to attack that one. He's going to attack the harpy, harpy to the north. Okay. He can't help himself. I take it that was uh, not exceeding an 11? <laughs> no. Okay. It wasn't a natural one, but it did not exceed an 11. Okay. Um, Swing and miss. <laughs> it's fine. Vara, uh, you mi I know you'd stepped away. So while you're in the midst of this battle with this, this harpy, at one point it stops its a back and forth fight with you looks over your shoulder to Tikaros and says, Love? But you are now up. What would you like to do? Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what kind of glance to Tikaros for, for guidance on if she seems like she understands what the harpy's talking about? Great. I will keep clawing and biting at it then. Um, so I will go ahead and attempt my bite. Hopefully I actually... Nope, that's the same rules as last time. 10 is not a hit. My claws, that's a 15. That's a hit. Yay! Excellent. That will be one. Plus one, two, three damage. <laughs> As I just oh. kind of claw at it. All right. Uh, so yeah, you kind of scratch it up a little bit, but it's not any kind of, uh, it's only superficial damage. Not anything kind really of. <laughs> deep, but. Uh, Perfect. Agrios. Agrios, having been given the chance to get back on his feet and maybe save himself, continues on as though nothing happened, conti continuing to try and murder the remaining harpy. Um, he holds his shield up, and there's sort of a crescent dip at the edge of it at the top, which he uses, resting his javelin in it, and jabs uh, someone Excellent. defensively. Excellent. Uh, first attack that is well that's a natural two so i'm going to go ahead and use my channel divinity to add plus okay. 10 to that um, that that's a hit do then. that after <laughs> okay yep um yep uh, and then so for damage it's going to be that's six piercing damage and then i'm going to go ahead and use my second war priest Okay. which is going to be 13 to hit that's a hit seven piercing damage this time okay and this one is also quite severely wounded really i well and truly blown my load at this point no more channel affinity <laughs> no more spell slots no more war priest <laughs> It's very though. good. So once again, the the soldiers are now going to advance farther. Part of them have broken off and surrounded the Sphinx with a shield wall, trying to keep the remaining harpies away from the the the, the suffering but awake Sphinx. Uh, the others are going to uh, make a rush forward, and so we're going to get attacks on. The one near Adrastos and the one near Ptolemaeus come in to try and hit. And they do not make good contact with the one by Adrastos. I would say that the pillar got in the way and they weren't able to. But the one by Ptolemaeus, on the other hand, 
they are ab actually able to spear and pin it to the ground. So it is, it is screaming in agony. It is still alive, but it is currently pinned down to the ground. How the, much damage did, did, did they do to it? Quite a bit. Cool, got it. I mean, you can see where it went through. It, it basically got impaled. But it's, it's, it, it can't be holding on by much. Okay. The remaining harpies, however, suddenly stop and then and speak out. It's enough done here. Return. We'll get them next time. And I'm going to check with each one of them. Give me just a minute as I go around and check the responses to this. All of them, but the one who is uh, fighting um, Vara immediately takes off. That one, however, is going to lash out with its claws one last time before it goes. Can we swing at them as they leave? Absolutely, you can. Attack of opportunity. Absolutely. So let me let me handle this one with Vara first. Vara, that's a fourteen to hit. That hits. That hits. Okay. Yes. And that you know it helps if I roll the right die. Just a moment. Uh, that is going to be four slashing damage. Ooh, taken. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And does it immediately uh, leave after that, or is it staying around? It, it slashes at you and then takes off. You better so get attacks. You, you have an attack of opportunity as well. Ooh. We'll handle yours first since we're here. Go ahead. Okay. I will claw off. Swipe at it and I get a 19 to hit. That's a definite hit. Mm. And that's, wow, this is before. Wow. That's another three. <laughs> Four wines in a row. Da, 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 da. All right. Hey, you, you get a, you get some grip on it. You get a little bit of cut into it. And hang I on to that. The last lap. I'm going to come back to you in just a moment as when you claw into it, it yells something out. But I got to see if you speak the language. So we'll be back to you oh, in just a moment. Uh, Agrios, you have the one that is near you that is taking off. I rolled a 22 to hit with eight, or yeah, eight piercing damage. Okay. And I'm going to say the route that it has to take to get away to follow along with the others is also going to give Ariana an attack of opportunity. Yeah, I'm rolled a 17 to hit. Absolutely. Um, and since they're running away, she's going to smite. Uh, so that'll okay. be 17 damage. That is enough to take that thing and just. <laughs> Pow it into the ground. Yep. If it's the one Adrios sw swung at, uh, she's going to like leap off a block and then leap off his back and just like <laughs> skewer this yeah. thing down into the ground. Yeah. I love it. You know what? I'm going to give credit. You both did that and did so much damage. As you leap off its back and spear it, you come down and also put your spear through the one that was in front of Ptolemaeus. Finishing it off. Yes. Go team. Because, you know, Big damn heroes. Adrastos, yeah, right. you have two of them at you near you who are taking off, so you have an attack of opportunity against each of them. Okay. Um, so the one that I missed will take my first attack of opportunity, which I already rolled was a 23 and did six damage. All right, very good. And then I'll just come around with my other one and just try to bash it with my shield. All right. And that is an eight. I missed. All right. Well, you, you definitely get a feel on the one as it's going, and you swing at the other, but it's able to definitely dodge out of the way. But the harpies go off into the distance, and you are left on the battlefield with corpses of harpies, corpses of people. 
And what languages do you speak, Ara? I speak Druidic, Primordial, and Common. You do not understand what it says as it flies away, but it was definitely something stated in anguish, almost as though the, the intonation, it was almost a plea for help. Oh, no. Would I have been close enough to hear it, too, maybe? Uh, I'm more than happy to say that you could be. What languages do you speak? Sylvan? Common. I'm afraid that that wouldn't work for those either. It'll just have to be a mystery. I'm also currently a badger, if that means anything. <laughs> was it in it badger? was not in it, it was <laughs> not in badgeries. Badger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cool. it said mushroom, go... mushroom, mushroom, mushroom. Ah, beautiful. Snake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the soldiers come in to check on all of you and assist with any wounds as much as they can. Uh, you are lauded for your efforts to protect the individuals around the area. And you see as people are beginning to put out fires from the damage, they're propping things up and stabilizing buildings where they can and general rescue effort as they try and stabilize from this horrific event. Which Adrasus would be... Sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. Adrasus would immediately lay into that. Like, as soon as he saw that help was happening, that's where he'd go. He'd, he'd brush people trying to help him off. He'd be like, no, I'm fine. Go see someone else. But you're bleeding. No, go see someone else and help them, like, prop up buildings and stuff. And uh, Ariana... Uh, one of your co-trainers, uh, the trainer for Myra, comes by looking and have have you seen have you seen Myra? She was she ran over here to help. We got separated and I, I haven't been able to find her. Uh, no, I haven't I hadn't seen her. Um perhaps uh Tigros, Vera, Vara? Have you did you see Myra? She wasn't down below, was she? Uh, Bara will go ahead and transform out of badger form and just kind of shake her head sadly. What? But she was the most amazing hero I've ever seen, at least on this day. Yes, we were. Um, we we were able to save uh, this 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 satyr, thanks to her help. But she uh, she was she passed. What what happened? How? Um. Well, she was valiantly holding up almost an, an entire room. It was, it was it was it was very impressive, but uh, its weight eventually gave way. Oh, I, I saw I, something! I saw something, Vara. I did not even tell you. Oh. I saw something when you were pulling the satyr out. It was like a giant thumbprint, uh, appearing kind of like that hand we saw outside. I saw the thumb and then it smashed down on Myra and there was nothing we could do. Do, do, do we think this is still the action of the gods? I mean, surely Myra, uh, what? these people didn't deserve this. Why, why, why would the gods, why would Heliod hurt Myra? Why do the gods do anything? Because it is within their caprice to do so. I don't, I don't think Heliod would do such a thing. I, I mean, he's not my god, but um, I am familiar with him. And uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it must have been someone else or something else. I, I, that harpy, uh, I, I don't know exactly what it said, but as it flew off, it, it almost seemed like it was in pain, like it didn't want to be hurting us. Is it normal for harpies to speak in a hive mind? Yeah, they all left at once, didn't they? And spoke in unison. I've I have never heard of that before. I I don't I don't know. Where where is I mean, Myra's body? 
down down below. Um, it is, it, it's not a pretty sight. But I, I left a coin for her passage. She takes your hand for a moment and just collapses to the ground and begins to sob. I'll, I'll clasp it tightly and I'll actually go ahead and come to the ground with her and, and almost join her in a mutual grieving and just kind of rest my head against her shoulder and let her rest hers on mine and, and sit there together. A finely appointed soldier very nice armor, which it's scratched and bloodied. It's not someone who's been standing on the sidelines, but they are obviously a person of some rank. Makes his way up to the group. Is there a Ptolemaeus? Uh, yes, I'm here. He walks over and places his arm around your shoulder so that he pulls you in close and whispers back and forth to you for a few minutes. Um, the oracle, the Sphinx oracle is, is gravely wounded. We need to get her to Melitus, but we are, we're very busy here with the aid and I cannot spare soldiers to carry her. I need you to take the group and get her to Melitus for aid and let them know what has happened here. I I've not Right. I I'll try. It's Sure. We'll do it. Get your team. We're getting a wagon. We will have to sneak you out undercover. We are we're obviously in fear that someone is trying to take the Oracle. We don't need the gods more angry at us than, than they already are. You will have to take the back roads. You cannot take the main road. He grabs your face and pulls it up. Understand me, you must keep this secret and stay away from the main roads. All right, staying away from the main roads. Got it. I understand. I know you fought here with a group of people. Um, I ask you, get them to commit to this. We will pay. I would hope it would be upon your honor to do such a thing, but we will pay if necessary for the Oracle's safe passage. Well, no other, right? No other that can take this? We were going to ask your friend Arachnus, but he didn't make it. That was my round, that last one. <sighs> oh, the next day comes. I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to talk to everybody. He clasps you on the shoulder, looks, takes a look around and shakes his head, pats you on the back and steps away. Uh, I'll turn around and, and kind of see, kind of look and scan every single one of my companions here and just, friends, my, my new companions, uh, could you, could you gather around, uh, closer? I have a proposition. Um. The Sphinx, the Oracle, needs safe passage. And 
of I need to transport them. I need to transport her and under the cover of night, side roads, and whatnot, and amongst you we I've we are fighters, casters, a well rounded enough group that that this adventure would be safe and fraught with danger, of course, if 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 need be, if if it so happens, but and I kind of look at Agrios when, when I say danger and just there will be pay and I feel like it is some sort of a duty of sorts for us to finish this. Is it possible for you to join me? Well, I don't know about duty, but it sounds like a secret and I love secrets. And I like you. Fair. I do like secrets and me as well. You as well. So. Adrastos just smiles at him, but you can see that having overheard that Mira is dead, tears are just like leaking out of his eyes. But he's like trying to keep that strong face. And he's like, of course, friend, I'd be happy to travel with you, though. I hope this rain stops soon. And then he walks away. Ariana will kind of catch him with a pat on the back as he walks. Um, uh, where, where, where does, uh, where does she need to go? Melitus. Melitus. She's going to, out of like a back pouch, pull like a day planner and start flipping through it and like have a little fold out map that folds out and go, Melitus. What's the distance? About how far away is Melatonis and Melatonis? Uh, it is it is a good three days travel from where you're at. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I think I've got time in between there. I've got an engagement in there. Absolutely. I'll scratch in a couple of things with it. <laughs> if it if it helps pencil. if it helps anybody. Um I mostly know the passage back. Uh, I didn't take a lot of main roads on on my way here, and well, they found me to do it, and Melitus is my hometown. I would like to see the root of this carnage, but my will is not my own. I must pray. See what Mogus intends for me. Then I will give you my answer. Excuse Fair me. Enough. Right. Very good. All right, you oh. said you're already on an adventure, didn't you? Of sorts. I just, uh, I, I have a, um, she kind of, she kind of tries to uh, clean herself up a little bit and straighten. Um, yes, I am, I am rather divinely uh, devoted to a certain cause, but uh, it's a cause that will, uh, it, it's a bit nebulous in scope, uh, lots of people and things and, and unknowns. So um, I've always relied on the stars to kind of help me with that. And um, well, Ptolemaeus has quite a few stars <laughs> as, as part of his very being, so. I think no one better to follow at the moment than him. Thank you. Though I, I do have concerns. Is it, the Sphinx is rather large, isn't it? We will have a wagon. They've, they've prepared one for us. All right. You do see at this point that the, his hair is kind of dulled a little bit yeah. from, from the, uh, the hearing of his friend. But he kind of hides it on his face. Actually, can I can I roll a deception for that and see how 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 well I hide it? Sure. Um, that is a twenty-one. So reasonably well, reasonably well. Uh, when shall we leave? As soon as we can. Well, if Agrios is to join us, 
Yes. Um, so I agree. Well, Sorry. Go ahead, Vara. I was going to say, let's uh, go ahead and give him time to pray and, and to. Uh, we've seen what this foe is capable of. Perhaps there's still some kind of bizarre shop where we can uh, get some reinforcements in the event everything that we encounter is to this scale. Agreed. And just operate on, on the fear that, or that maybe something is targeting the art Oracle. So as time goes on, Agrios, how long do you require for your prayer and time? Um, let's see. Well, how long is everyone willing to wait, first of all? Uh, it's going to take time for them to get the wagon and everything together. So I would, I would say that if everyone wanted, they would have long enough for a long rest. Okay. Definitely over the course of a long rest, he would have time to do it. Um, okay. He would prefer to use something alive to sacrifice, but uh, failing all else, he will take the one uh, corpse of the harpy that he himself killed with uh, Toll the Dead, feeling a right to it and uh, sort of paints his face in its blood and uh, uses it for the ritual to pray um, and consult the will of, of Mogus. And what is your question to Mogus? His question is, shall I, is it your will that I go? Is it your will that I go with these travelers? You suddenly feel that that blank moment that you get when Mogus is talking through you. It is my will that you find out who pins the blame of these deaths on the gods. Question, am I aware of the words coming out of my own mouth when he does this? I'm gonna say that, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna say yes, you are. I think that makes sense that you wouldn't have a clue. Oh. <sighs> he will return to the group if they're far away, but that's a good that's my question. Is anyone close enough that they would have heard that themselves? I would have snuck off to you. <laughs> Adrastos might have heard it. Yeah. Because he wasn't with the group. He kind of went off to do his own thing, so he went may off have to heard mope. It. <laughs> He's not moping. He's going to go punch something. <laughs> That's like moping. That's jock moping. <laughs> jock moping, yes. <laughs> Angry mope. Kind kindergarten moping, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, in that case, uh, a couple of you did hear what was stated. Oh, yes, has spoken. I will join you on your quest. May Be good to have your blade along. Sorry, Agrius, go ahead. May carnage follow in our wake. And it will be good to join you. Heck yeah. I It'll run up good and to see have your if, blade. <laughs> I'll see if he'll let me up on his back again. So I can do a little weep and holo. You can, but he's so covered in blood, both his own and others, that uh, you will probably get a little messy. I press the digitation as I jump up. <laughs> I clean you completely. <laughs> Leave the stripe on my face. I like to keep it. Okay. <laughs> right. you, press the, you clean it all off and then you go, oh. <laughs> so the blood comes back this way. Yeah. 
So after you have all had an opportunity to rest, a couple of the Miletus guards come to grab you and bring you to the cart that they have set up. And it is a very long cart, high sides with a canvas top. It. There is no lighting attached to it. It is drawn by two horses. You've got to be We're quiet. supposed to be stealthy. Oh, Keep light to a minimum. Um, we've provided food as provisions. And one of the guards takes out this. This is, this is a hunting map. My father and I used to hunt the route between here and Melitus. If you stay off the main trails and follow most of these game trails, it will take longer, but there's less chance of anyone seeing you or, or you encountering anyone, to be honest. Yes. I have traveled these ways as well, coming from Oreskos, and I can see under cover of night. I will lead the expedition. The rest of you stay close to me. Fair enough. So with the horses, you withdraw through a pass in the mountain range that backs up Neil Anton from the bay and is a separation that lets you go in a little bit deeper and get off the main trails. And this will be where we pick up next week.